Hey, what's up? Okay. Yeah. So I've been noticing a lot of hate and a lot of confusion about what a true melee player does. Um, I also hear a lot of people give excuses of why they don't use melee. Again, I understand that uh, Call of Duty is basically four guns. That's why most people play it, is to level up the guns, get different attachments so it operates different. I love it, I love all of that. But my thing is, it gets to the point where the game is only sustainable and fun if you're using the same gun as most of the other people. When you've got certain guns that are overpowered and overpowering other weapons, then it doesn't give you any incentive to use a different gun. If you wanna do good, you usually have to do what everybody else is doing. That, that's not fun. You want to be yourself. You want to have fun. You want to go out there and just try some things, you know? And with Melee, you're able to do that. So I figured for the player that is new to Melee or is scared to do it or they don't know they're scared. They're convinced that they hate it. They com they're convinced that it is terrible. It's for, it's for weaklings. It's for another word that I don't feel like saying right now because it is a bad word. Yeah, something like that. So, yeah. And I'm gonna start off, I got, I have 10, sorry. I have 12 melee only tips. They are to help you focus on certain skills that are needed to be better with melee. I get asked a lot, usually from friends, even just, I know it's kidding, but in lobbies, when I do really good, I have people saying, oh, sensei, you gotta teach me your ways. You gotta, you gotta help me, dog. And so I, this video is needed, I figured. Nobody is doing it. Nobody on YouTube has a video dedicated to tips and tricks for melee. It's all how to get it gold, how to level it up. It's all of that stuff. And I figured there was a needed market for it. So here we go. I got 10 tips and then two uh, special ones just for you. So let's say uh, the number 10, it's not that obvious, but the operator you use. Usually the basic ones to blend in are better. So like if you're using like the very first operators you get, those are great. If you're starting off and you don't wanna be the center of attention, you're already gonna be the center of attention with using melee. So you need something else to kind of blend in using those base operators. Um, I know if you purchase operators, it sucks having to go back, but if you wanna just try to get in there and try to do decent for a little, and then once you get good, then you can switch and flex on them with the, with the expensive operators. All right, and so then a number 11, or nine, I guess I should say. I'm doing this all wrong. <laughs> Controller sensitivity. It varies, but usually the higher the sensitivity, the better. Um, I generally go a little bit lower on the vertical axis and higher on the horizontal, meaning I don't aim up and down as quick. I am able to spin, and so that kind of cancels out the two me going up high or low kind of so I can just turn better um, recently I've been playing with a little bit lower than I was and it does help um, considering with the crossbow out it does help to have a little bit lower sensitivity I usually I run it like a 13 uh, for horizontal that's because I want to spin on a dime I want to spin quick but uh, if you're not used to that then you could definitely work on like a 9 or an 8 even all right then controller layout it varies as well as you want both fingers on sticks at all times and you want to be able to jump and slide quickly and also have access to the melee button and what i mean by access to the melee button is especially in warzone when you first land you have the gun and if you're going for melee only it's difficult if you're having to push uh, x or a just to melee so i have my actual melee button 
push in on the joystick. Some people have that for ducking or sliding. Um, it really just depends what you're looking for. But since I melee dominantly, I always have that access to, I don't have to lift my fingers up off the sticks. I just push the button in and melee. And it seems to help uh, with that aspect. Oh, as far as sliding and jumping goes, I have this, you can get these off Amazon. It just slides on. You know, let's see if I can. It just goes right in the headphone jack. You see, that's the back of it. These are two little extra buttons. And you just put it on there. Headphone goes in the bottom. And you got two extra paddles here. I have these being my jump and my crouch. And that helps to keep your fingers on the sticks at all times and always be able to jump or slide whenever you need to. They also sell scuff controllers, but those are like 160 bucks. So if you're not looking to spend that right away, if you want to try this out, that's why I got these. I wanted to try it out. I'm soon to be getting my scuff controller in time. Well, anyways, next we have the perks you use. So when I say the perks you use, it really depends on the kind of game you're playing. If it is like team deathmatch or uh, domination, uh, you generally like don't need ghost. I mean, unless you unless that's how you want to play. If you want ghost all the time to be super sneaky, that's great. Um, that's depending up to you. Sometimes I don't even run ghost. It's kind of pointless because um, when you're melee, you're constantly moving. The only way I would say Ghost is good is if you're planning on sitting in one spot for a while and just kind of trolling people, then yeah, then, then Ghost definitely helps. But usually I would rather have, uh, it depends on the game too. Modern Warfare, I'd rather have restock. And because um, that would just constantly give you your equipment because you're going to be going through throwing knives and stuns. Stuns are really important, so that's going to be a later tip. Um, so yeah, just your, your perks are very important. I can, I'm gonna go more in depth on this in another video of uh, what perks are good for what, of course, a lot of people know those, but I would just be giving you a general idea of if you're playing a certain game mode or a certain style, these perks would uh, best be suited for you. Tacticals. A lot of people, they don't use their tacticals, believe it or not. It is easy to get caught up in the game and just focused on just running and stabbing or some people focus too much on the tactical where it ruins their play, where they're so focused on throwing a stun or, or a smoke grenade out that they get killed in the process of mid throwing. So you, you want to just have it in, have it in the back of your mind, like muscle memory, like just like, okay, here's a situation coming up. I know a guy's coming. I'm going to toss it before he gets there. It takes a little bit of foresight and knowing the game and some sound whoring, but you always want to use your tacticals. You only have a knife, you only have a throwing knife or a tomahawk. You have to use everything that you got. It helps, trust me, you'll need it. This one, it's not easy for some people. A lot of times if you're playing by yourself, it, it, it can go against you, but your team. It's very important to have a team that can somewhat be able to hold their own on one side of the map or a certain area. If the enemy is pinned, you just need to find a way to get to them by a different direction, meaning you flank them. And so what I mean by this is basically like when you're playing and if you're playing with a bunch of randoms and they're all go spreading out, it makes your job really hard. Because what you want to do is you want your most of your team to go to one side or one part of the map. And then while the enemy team is distracted, you come around on the opposite side of the map and flank them. And that's how you can kill the whole squad, depending. It, it really does depend on the team you're playing with. It, it takes a factor. If the whole team is knifing, that adds another variable to the match where you would have to take it in and figure out, all right, so my other teammates are knifing. They're also running different paths than usual. They're also pushing the other team trying to flank. So what your normal flank would be is now something totally different because you already have people f going at that direction. So the enemy's already focused on that direction. So you kind of have to just think of different paths and uh, 
who your team is is very important on how you handle the match. All right, and so this next tip, it, it's score streaks or kill streaks. This depending if you don't shoot bullets or if you're melee only, of course, um, they can be extremely useful. If you're the type of melee player where you want to still use your score streaks, some people don't do it because it's considered shooting and and stuff like that. So if you're using guns, the, the VTOL, attack chopper, cruise missile, um, a lot of the ones that you don't have to control are the best just because you you want to be out there stabbing people you don't want to focus your time on on a helicopter chopper and trying to shoot people um that's just me though like me personally i don't use much of the score streaks in modern warfare i do uh the the i can't remember what it's called the bonus um perk bonus I, 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 of course I can't remember it. I'll edit it in after. It's called Specialized. And on uh, Cold War, my kill streaks are UAV. I use the combat bow. Okay, so I, I get the combat bow. I like that because it's still melee and I can kind of shoot people with it, have some fun, feel like Robin Hood. The next one I have either a UAV or a counter UAV. And then I have an air patrol. The air patrol is to protect me and my team from other score streaks that are aerial, and that helps. Um, sometimes, for one of the other ones, I'll put the armor on. Of course, these are all just for uh, melee only, not firing a bullet or anything. I'll either have the crossbow, sometimes I'll do the armor. The armor is kind of hit or miss for me. I mean, it really depends from going up against a lot of people throwing tomahawks. Then I got I prefer the regular spy plane over the counter spy plane. That's just me personally. And then the air patrol. Um, of course, if you fire bullets, you can use any of the other score streaks. It really doesn't matter. I mean, it's really depending on you, what you find comfortable, what you're best with. All right, and so my next tip is going to be pay it, the mini map use. You wanna pay attention to that mini map. Sometimes it's hard to focus on it when you got a lot going on but every now and then just keep in the back of your mind that that muscle memory is constantly looking up looking up because it really does help anytime somebody shoots you see where they are you know where they are you got a general idea of an area where somebody is and you can look at that and then see where your teammates are so if they're all up on the north and they're here you have a general idea the enemy's gonna be looking up or towards your enemy so then you just figure out a way to get to them Throw a stun in, boop, got him. All right, next tip is crosshair placement or centering is what it's called. And that's basically when you're running around the map, you make sure that your crosshair is the center of the screen constantly. Just make sure it's always in that center. If you see it drifting, put it back. You're kind of just playing the game while looking through the crosshair. That's what I do at least where I, I, I kind of just put, imagine the crosshair is not even there in a sense. I'm just looking at it. And as soon as somebody steps in front of that, then I aim. But yeah, that is really important, especially when you're trying to go fast because the more often that it's in the center, more often you're gonna get kills because that's where the enemy is. All you gotta do is just put the enemy in the middle of the screen, boom, done, move on. It's movement. What I mean by movement is you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to run straight constantly. You always want to zigzag or jump or slide, slide, cancel, constantly be moving out of the line of sight. And a lot of times when you're running and there's an enemy in front of you, your, your first thought, your first action is, I got to get to him as quick as possible. The quickest way between two points is straight to it. I'm just going to run to it. He can't hit me. It's an easy shot for him. <laughs> Unless you can throw a tomahawk real quick or a stun, you're, you're, you're still, like even a stun, you're still gonna get blasted because he all he has to do is point straight. So when you come up to someone in that situation, you're gonna wanna strafe and kind of move in a curved motion where you're moving straight, but you're also kind of going diagonal. And then what that does is it makes it a little bit harder for him to track you, especially if when you're going diagonal and you slide, or you jump and then slide and then get to them, you just have to add in, just, you can't be predictable. You can't be. 
you can't like i when i run i just constantly flick left and right because my sensitivity is so high i kind of like wiggle when i go around so i'm not an easy shot i do that and then i slide cancel jump slide cancel run slide cancel run and like it's just you gotta keep ducking and moving your head out of line of sight and the next one it this one comes with time this next tip it it definitely a lot of it is time playing and sometimes when you first go into the match it's not that easy but reading players this is when you start a match and this happens to me a lot where i'll start a match and i'll play like a minute into it and i'll die a bunch um i'm getting tore up straight up like it's bad but a lot of what i'm doing in that situation is i'm kind of reading the enemy of seeing what paths they're taking, um, if there's a certain spot they like to stop at, um, how good is their aim? Uh, a lot of times I'll just chuck a stun, not even expecting to get a kill, just to see if they have tack mask on or uh, battle hardened to cancel out my stun. And uh, so I'm just gathering a lot of intel and information the first little bit of the of the match just to figure out what these enemy players are gonna be doing. Cause we're not that different. A lot of people are gonna do the same things, the same routes. It's gonna be like, I mean, look, most of the guns in Warzone are all FAR, CAR 98, AUG. I mean, it's all pretty much the same. A lot of people are doing the same thing. A lot of taking the same paths and doing the same things. So it's easy to read them after a while. You just gotta figure out what they're doing and you can get on top of that easily. That's the that's the main one of the main things with melee. But the most important, this is my number one tip. Learn the maps. Map knowledge, tip number one is map knowledge. And by map knowledge, I mean you gotta know specific routes. You got to know camping spots, not necessarily for you to camp in, but to know when you're going by there to check it, because if you know it's a camping spot, so do other people. So, and we know how these games are. People love to camp. It's the name of the game for some of them. So you just have to know where those spots are. And on top of that, definitely helps to know different routes that people don't normally take so usually it's like jumping over over a crate so let's say you're going and you have to either go left or right or you can jump up most people are going to go left or right even in some cases more people are going to go left it, it depends on the map of course if you know what i'm saying there's going to go left to go to a certain route that everybody takes is just they're just used to it but if you go up over then a lot of people wouldn't expect that because a lot of people subconsciously know all right everybody takes left or right so they're gonna come out one side usually it's this side and they're just gonna aim there so if you can just have that one little advantage that one little up on them of knowing okay so i know he's on this other side here all i gotta do is just do something a little different and just jump over sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but that's a lot of the game they won't you, this game is timing and luck that's all it is it, it really like any time you die look at how you died and i can guarantee it was just all about timing and the other guy's luck of aiming like seriously if you go around a corner at the wrong second the whole other team could be over there you don't know i mean that's just what it is that's the game you either have good timing or bad timing and you just got to know how to go around it if you realize all right i'm not doing so good how do i change this hold back a second you know when you spawn don't rush out just take your time you're not in a rush why should you be in a rush you're already dying no rush to go die unless you're crazy but then again just keep running at him see how it goes if not take a break I hope these were helpful. I don't know if they will be. And I, I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for this. I get so much hate for Riot Shield and running melee only. They, like, it's amazing. 
it, it really is. It's amazing where you get called a wussy, like a, literally a wussy. I'm not saying the actual word that I get called, but you know, it's a wussy. And because I run mainly only, like they say, oh, that's so easy. A noob could do it. Well, if it is, then why aren't you doing it? If it is, then why aren't everybody in war zone playing with sticks and the shield like they are fars and ogs? I mean, if it really was as easy as you say, then more people would be doing it. So I, I don't buy that. I don't buy that at all. It's not easy. You have to have some knowledge to do it, whether it's map knowledge or any of the other list of things that I said that would help. Anyways, yeah. If you like this video, I'm gonna be dropping more tip videos. Um, and yeah, we'll see how this goes. If you uh, have any suggestions or tips on the video or any other tips that I might have missed out, please leave a comment and let, let me know. I'm always open to it. Or if you just wanna comment and say how, how stupid and lame I am because I use Melee only and I'm trying to uh, teach people how. That, well, that works too. Just give me a follow and a like, and then you can talk shit. Okay? Anyways, have a great day, guys. I'm the Sensei, and uh, I'll see you later.